Hello guys and dolls, welcome back to Huddy Badger 3D Print and Paint. Today we are at Form Next 2024. We have got loads coming for you. Uh, we are sponsored this year by Sunlu. Take a look in the video description for a link and a discount code. Just to be clear, it's an affiliate link, helps the channel out. Let's take a look at some of the amazing tech that is on display at the show. Welcome back guys, we are at Cosmics and we're taking a look at the cool machines that you have here. This one has a robot arm, so we'll be looking at that in a minute. But first of all, tell me about this big beast. Uh, hi everyone, we are from Cosmics and in Cosmics we are producing industrial printers. The goal for us is to provide to you Normally a printer is bigger than the entire process. But first of all, let's talk about a printer. The printer is an Artex one, 300 by 300, 600 millimeters, made in France. And with this machine, you're able to print almost all filaments in the market. We got two different machines, a standard one and item project one. With standard one, you can print mostly technical filaments you like, PPCF, APS, ASI, high speed, this kind of stuff. This is very easy to maintenance. In, this, in the IDEX machine, we have only two uh, belts on one screw to maintain. So it's quite easy. Internal made software, fully connected with our slicer, no licensing, of course. And with this machine, you are able to print two different materials in the same time super of micro, BVO, HF, PVA, whatever you may expect. But we are not doing only uh, the printers, we are doing on, we are doing two automation. The automation is the robotic. Uh, arm system because you see a lot of desktop printers but you could have you could need more than just a desktop printer you will need automation at a moment because every one of you who have a printed farm knows the, the mess that it is to remove plate, remove plate, put under the plate, put new filaments and we'll solve this issue with the robotic arm and injection system. Just running to you simply you could print a small to medium part the country push out um, parts out of the machine and if you are big parts of if you'll be afraid of the geometry of the filament you can use the anti-robotic arm because with this one you can, you'll be able to unload each type of part because you're unloading the entire plate directly that's what we are doing with cosmics so let's so let's just unpack some of that so let's start with the big machine so does this big machine come in the farm can yeah. you have that in the farm yeah, as well and you can have what's currently in the farm as an individual machine yeah. if that's what you, you wanted um but you're talking about an end-to-end -end ecosystem, right? So it's it's machine, it's automation, it's software and material. Yeah, you can you provide can. all of it yes, in a one-stop shop. We could, we will provide to you the entire process, the knowledge, the training, maintenance, machine, the filament. We have worked a lot with different filament manufacturers. We are filament open, of course, but we prefer um, providing to you the right filament for your uses. We have PP, we have ASA, we have some high speed PLA to give you an idea, we are 10% quicker than Bamboo Labs in terms of speed on these machines, out of serial from whatever machine you will expect. Uh, bearing in mind that, so, okay, so let's so let's talk actual specs on this machine specifically. Yeah. So we've obviously already got the print size and it's massive and yeah. it is an IDEX. So what, what kind of temperatures can we get in this? In the normal machine, you could go up to 300 degrees on the head. And right. the high temperature, 500 degrees with control chamber. Okay, so that's, Heat, that's PA carbon fiber, yeah. that sort of entry level nylons. Yeah, you've got like it. That. PA 11, PA 6, whatever you could expect. Yeah, or glass Great, fiber, enough. carbon fiber, not a problem. And then hardened nozzles yeah. because you're using Carbi Bontech CHTs. Nozzle. Carbide nozzles, right? Because uh, we're using Bontech CHTs, so you're yeah. still getting high flow yeah. um, and you're still able to maintain those, those, those speeds. So, what yeah. kind of print speeds are you normally getting on machines this size? Normal sprint, sprint speed. Mm. Really normal spin speed is about between four to six hundred millimeters per second. With PLA. normal print speed. Normal PLA print speed. That's out of our profile. Directly on the profile. It's not so, high speed. So <laughs> well, I mean, yeah, it is. It's so it's <laughs> in, in cosmics we doesn't want to lie. We print what we could print if so. It's with some high speed filament, yeah. but we could achieve this. Because we, we have the full steel chassis yeah. and the H-Pot solution, we are able to speed up. With okay. PLA. But 
we'll be honest, all the way, we couldn't achieve this speed with nylon or with PP. No, we and that's fair. We use up to 200 millimeters per second with some special nylons. The thing to remember is that is that a top speed is exactly that, right? It yeah. is a top speed. It's not necessarily the speed that every material is going yes, to do, and, mas and machine speeds in a lot of different in a lot of different places especially in resin but in fdm as well a lot yeah. of print speeds that are advertised feel like marketing terms they are just yeah. in theory you could do a thousand millimeters a second because the motors will let you do that but that's it will we don't see on your data sheets some i don't know one thousand millimeters per yeah. second speed now this is the speed who are entered in the slicer that you yeah. will receive with the machine 400 millimeters per second with PLA will be on the slicer. On and the then it's the same tool head that's on the smaller yeah, machine as it. well. Is the build plate a different size on the smaller machine yeah. or is it just, is no, it just no, it? it's a bit smaller too. Right? 300 by 200 by 200. It's still not small though, yeah. is it? Let's be fair, like, yeah. that's, still a, that's still a really good size. And you're still, so as, so we looked earlier, obviously all auto bed leveling and all auto calibration and everything else, you've got filament run out sensors. When we're dealing with, when we're dealing at a farm level and you've got the arm that's currently yeah. removing prints, um, that, so how's it doing filament change then? Is everything uh, on the, is everything, I mean, we're not going around the back of it for obvious yeah, reasons, yeah. but is it just, can it just change out material whenever you want? We or are a different it... solution. For the moment, we uh, use 10 kilograms spurs on special dryers. Right and behind of the machines. And we are working with some people to get some auto-loading and auto-feeding auto filament from okay. new filament. All right. But for the moment, we prefer um, get in touch with 80 kilograms of filament in the two dryers behind me to be, uh, to be able to print continuously. Yeah. So the, the aim of the game with continuous printing is all about maximizing the amount of workflow that you have. You got it. If all you are doing is printing between the hours of nine and five, it doesn't really matter how fast your machine is. If there's another machine that is going 24 seven, then it. all of a sudden your workflow doubles, triples, quadruples, and then you come in in the morning yes. to a finished you're set of prints that you're able to. <laughs> you come in, your production line's finished, and it's able to go through. So. This is obviously a very cool way to control yeah. your machines, but I'm That's assuming it. you've got remote monitoring tools yeah. as well. We're and queue, you can do we've farmware. Got yeah, so you've got full farmware yeah. and full workflow there. Is that, so your farmware, does that link out to front, like shop front and do API calls to bring yeah. in? You it will it. do. Yeah, you got so it. You, so you've got effectively a, a drop-in shop that you comes into it. your factory. We could connect point. ourselves to different storage catalogs kind of stuff yeah. and push it by IPI on the, on the machine. We've got a queue system that's just available to print um, continuously with the robotic arm. Behind each machine, it uh, normally include regarding octo print that makes you available to connect to something you know, to store your file, organize your file, and manage your, film, your printing at distance. So again, let, let's be clear about how different that is than normal solutions. So there are a number of automated solutions, but invariably their workflow still requires human initiation. A customer has bought something, you load the file, you put it into a queue, you then say how many they want and off they go. But with API calls, someone buys 20 things on Etsy, the files are already sliced and the files are already sliced um, and they just the Etsy defines how many that person's bought, loads it straight into the machine, and off you go. And you, that's say, it, you, get, and you come in in the morning, and, you're, and the, the thing's already done. You pack if it you're up talking about go. automation, you have to automate the entire process. Yeah. Because if you understand it only, only half of the process, it doesn't make sense. Yes. You have to be yeah, fully yeah. integrated. And I mean, the, the, the loading and unloading is, is a relatively simple procedure. So we're just going to take a look at how this is working. Of the robot to come with special holders, we will take the entire plate and just unloading it on the bottom of the solution. But if you have some special TPU uh, flat one, you could do another stuff. You will pick the plate, unload the plate and special cabinet, yep. and grab one for the stockpile to put a new on the machine. So there are different ways that you can do, again, yeah. automated loading and unloading. One is that you basically take the plate out that's in there and you just store that plate ready for human interaction later. And that person takes it off and does whatever they need to. And you can do that with this, but if you had delicate parts, for example. Right. Or you can have full ejection automation where the plate comes out, it comes down here. There's a flat bar here that knocks it off. It flexes the plate. They come into here, which as you can see, they've been printing 
at the show, all these things, Done. which actually are the they're the fan covers for the actual printers. Yeah, that's it. This that's is production part because yeah. you have an exhibition, but you, we are upset to print only goodies. Yeah. We are production solutions, so yeah. we produce parts for the next printers. Yeah. So then when Duke removes those parts, you get a big box of them, you come in in the morning yeah, and the human takes them away to go off and do whatever they want. That's and the then it puts that plate straight back into the machine as well. So it's a fairly, I mean, yes, this is obviously a large machine, yeah. but let's be clear, this is also not going in your garage, right? This is, this no. is a production grade machine. So talk to me about pricing. And I know pricing's hard because customization means that yeah. everything changes given the That's thing. It. But let's start with an individual Cosmix, one of the an small machines. Your machine is beginning to a bit less than 5,000 euros. Okay, all right. And then we go to the giant the big Z. big one, 7,000 7,000, yeah. and then this configuration with automated loading and... and begin at 120,000 euros. About 120 k. Yeah. So that gets you six machines, you've got material covered underneath, yeah. a really cool robotic arm that gets you back-end software, firmware integration, it gets you end-to-end -end coverage, it gets you service wrapper. If you want to uh, do some uh, inter artificial intelligence scan to be sure that part is okay, you could communicate with the robot. Yeah. If you want to split a robot, put it in belt, put it in some uh, boxes for our shipping or whatever, you could automate it with this industrial robot. So then let's talk about the last element of this, the service wrapper that you put all around it. So one of the biggest issues, I say issue, a, a labor cost is that you yeah. have to have somebody in most of the factories that you have these that knows how to work on, manage and deal with the technical faults that they can't with this machine. This automation means that you don't need a technical person who's removing prints, you don't need an engineer doing that because that's all automated, but when things break, you normally have to have a relatively highly paid and skilled that's engineer it. on site, but you offer our whole service wrapper Does, around that to mean it. that you really only need the people who are yep. operating and picking exactly. up because you're able to, you're able to, you're able to, to supply that. To maintain this correctly right. because I told you, in fact, we have different systems. You have the maintenance, we came, we repair the machine, we fix it, but we have something more uh, quicker. If you have, for example, an issue on the machine, you put back the machine in the box and we send you a new one. We roll up with machines. So just drop in replacement, yeah. take the other one out. You take the other one this away to repair. If you then... invest in this solution, that's mean that you end not the time for this. Right. So we get the time for you. We send back to the machines. We have a quick answer to your issue. Mm -hmm. That's the approach. And again, workflow and capacity, when you're doing multiples of these machines, that is absolute key. Having a machine down, nobody is only utilizing 50% of their workflow at any yeah. one time, right? You scale your workflow to the amount of work that you have. So if you suddenly lose a machine, you're down sort of, you're down, you're you're down 15, 20% minute. of your workflow, you're down, you're, you're, you're down capacity, and your way of dealing with that is drop-in replacements. We yeah. come, you come in, we drop the new machine in, yeah. it plugs in, you could, the old you could machine have goes a spare back. machine directly on your warehouse yeah. if you need it. And then, then you just drop in, off you go, money. hook it up, That's and then the it. workflow continues whilst it. the machine is being repaired somewhere else. That's it. Interesting. Well, 